In this video, we're going to talk about how to pick the correct spark plug for your BMW with the B58 engine. This will apply to all F-Series and G-Series BMWs, as well as the Toyota Supra, and technically even the B48 engine, because that comes with the same spark plugs and a similar engine design. So a lot of this information will translate. Um, but to start things off, this is my 2018 440i, the one I've been doing all my videos on. And I've had it for about three years. It's been tuned for a little over a year. I've gone from off the shelf maps to now I have a custom tune and I'm getting ready to replace the spark plugs just as preventative maintenance. It's a little bit before it would be required from BMW, but um, I just want to do it early. So I've been paying attention for the past, you know, four years. I was researching even before I got the car, watching the forums, gathering information in my own data. And um, based on my own research, I'm going to present all the information I have. So um, just a disclaimer, no matter what, I recommend if you ask on an open forum, somebody will say that they're doing what I wouldn't recommend. And they've been running it for 2 million miles and their grandfather had it on his B58 and et cetera, et cetera. So take this for what it's worth. These are my recommendations based on facts that you can find anywhere on the Internet. You can look it up yourself, but... Um, as always, you know, your mileage may vary, so keep that in mind. So what I want to do is basically start off by talking about general spark plug principles and what you need to pay attention to when picking spark plugs. Then I have an array of options that we've been recommended in the past. So I'll talk about all of these different ones and why one would work better than the other. And then at the end, I'll answer some commonly asked questions. So first things first, let's talk about some general spark plug principles. Um, the two main things that people want to talk about when picking spark plugs is the heat range and the spark plug gap. So the first thing that you need to know is the heat range you want to run because when you buy a spark plug, it'll have a heat range assigned to it and it is fixed. The way that the heat range is determined is based on this insulator. And the size of the insulator and how deep it actually goes into the spark plug is what controls the heat range or majority of the control for the heat range because that absorbs the heat conducts it out to the cylinder head and then cools it off with the ambient air so that helps keep your combustion temperatures in check um, if you're doing things like increasing boost increasing your combustion chamber temperatures from um, like increasing the compression ratio or anything like that you want to run a colder spark plug to help pull that extra heat out and keep it within a safe operating range However, you don't want to go too cold either, because if your spark plug is too cold, then it'll pull out too much heat from the combustion chamber and will not allow it to fire. Um, so you need to pick it in the right range. You don't want your combustion temps to get too hot where you could have misfires or uh, pre-ignition, but you also don't want it too cold where it won't fire at all. The second thing that you need to pay attention to is your gap, and that's the distance between this electrode and the ground strap. So you basically want to measure that and make sure that it is within the ideal range. All of them come preset to the OEM standards or the manufacturer standards, um, but that is something that can be changed. Running a bigger gap is actually ideal. Most people don't realize that, but a bigger gap will burn for longer and can basically do a more efficient burn in the combustion chamber. So you'll get higher MPG, and just a cleaner burning car. When you drop the gap, you'll actually make a bigger, brighter spark, and it can help compensate for things like high cylinder temps, um, high cylinder pressures, and a lot of things that can prevent the spark from firing. Reducing the gap can help compensate for that. So again, in these scenarios, there's always the default answer, drop the gap, get colder plugs, you're tuning your car, you gotta do it. But in reality, the best way to do it is to pull your plugs and read them. You'll need to look at the tip, and this one is brand new, but on a used one, you can see if there are burn marks, if it's covered in soot, or if it's wet um, and black. Those are indicators that something needs to change. Either spark plug gap needs to change, or you need to change the heat range of your plug. That's the only real way to tell. If you look at your logs, um, I've actually tried changing the gap to see if it improves timing and things like that. And the only thing that I've felt it improve is your cold starts. And that's why a lot of people say when you're running high ethanol blends, you want to reduce the gap because it takes a lot of 
a much brighter spark for E85 to ignite. And especially in winter months when it's cold, it takes a lot more energy to start the car and get the E85 to burn. So you can drop the gap in that scenario to help with cold starts and help with rough idles. But if you're not having any issues, if you're just tuning on 93 octane or even E30, you should be fine with the gap out of the box. All right, so to start things off, we're going to begin with the OEM plugs for the first generation B58 engine. Both of these plugs are OEM options. One is from Champion and one is from NGK. For Champion, this is the part number, RERX4ZWYPB-1. And then the NGK one, completely different numbering system, S1LZKGR8BAS. So my car actually came with Champions. Like I said, it's a 2018. Um, some of the earlier cars I've heard of coming with the NGKs, like 2016s and 2017s, you'd have to actually pull it out of your car to check. We haven't been able to determine if there's any rhyme or reason to why some cars came with Champions and others came with NGKs. But both of these are OEM plugs, so you can actually see the designs are extremely similar. It's got like a different type of washer. But other than that, the actual geometry is the same. So the only actual difference between these plugs that a lot of people don't realize is the NGK plug is a heat range of 8. If you actually look at this number, that first 8 right there is the heat range. And then the same thing on the Champion plug, it is a heat range of 4. You can see it right there at the beginning of the part number. Um, and if you look at a correlation chart between the heat ranges on NGK and Champion, you'll find that a heat range of 4 on the Champion scale is actually one step colder than a heat range of 8 on the NGK scale. So technically, the Champion spark plugs are a step colder than the NGK plugs. Um... For me, I don't think it's that significant of a difference because both plugs came OEM from the factory, but I do plan on replacing mine with the Champion plugs that it came with since they're colder and they've been working fine in my experience. So you can kind of see another physical difference is that the insulator, this is the insulator shape. Whereas on the NGK, it's a little bit tapered. So that doesn't necessarily indicate anything about the heat range because the heat range will be more dependent on how deep the insulator goes inside of the spark plug, but the shape of it is a little bit different. So that's probably just something proprietary with their manufacturing or how they order their components, not something significant or something I would take as a reason to pick one or the other but my recommendation here is whatever your car came with feel free to run it if you have brand loyalty feel free to stick with your preferred brand at the end of the day they're both oem they both work the ngk is a step hotter than the champions but in the grand scheme of things it's probably not going to make that big of a difference next up we have the oem plugs for the second generation b58 engine and BMW did the exact same thing. They have an option from Champion and an option from NGK. The latest information that I've gotten is pretty much all of the TU engines that people are seeing now are coming with the Champions. But if you order the OEM plugs from BMW, sometimes they come with NGK plugs as well. So in this situation, I actually ordered the OEM plug. You can see the OEM part number, 12124552528. And when I opened the box, it was a Champion plug. And for me, I actually couldn't find these Champions sold individually on any websites. I think BMW is pretty much hoarding them all. But this is the part number for future reference, RERX4ZWYPD-1. The only difference between this one and the gener first generation B58 plug is that D. On the first gen, it's a B. And then for the NGK plugs, 
Same thing, the part number is the exact same, except at the end this has a C instead of a B, so this one is C-A-S instead of B-A-S. So, um, pretty much the same situation. They're both very similar geometry. They have a different style washer, but if you put them side by side, it's virtually the same spark plug. Now, one thing I do want to mention, um, I'll bring in the first gen B58 plug from Champion and put it next to the second gen. And if you look at the tip, you can see that it actually is deeper in the combustion chamber. It'll fire deeper in the combustion chamber. And you can find that on the specs, it actually extends an extra two millimeters longer. And my understanding is that's because with the lower compression and different pistons, they relocated the actual tip of the electrode so that it would fire in a different area and still get an efficient burn. So the only real difference between the TU plugs and the first generation B58 plugs is how deep that electrode is it's an extra two millimeters deeper but it doesn't fire any stronger it's not any brighter it's not any colder they're both on the same scale for champion and the same scale for ngk they're both the same so both of these are four heat range on the champion scale and the ngks are both eight on the ngk scale so there's really no benefit to switching to the tu plug I know a lot of people say that they think it fired a lot better, ran a lot smoother, but it's probably just because it was a new spark plug, not because of the spark plug design itself. So in this case, I would say stick with your first gen B58 style plug if you have a first gen like mine, or stick with a TU style plug if you have the second generation B58. So the last one that I want to talk about is kind of, you know, the ringer from left field. This is the OG. NGK97506, you guys probably have that memorized by heart because it's been recommended for turbo BMWs since like the JB3 days, much less JB4. Um, this is the one that everybody ran in their N54, their N55, the S55. So when the B58 came out, everybody was recommending these plugs as well. This plug actually runs two steps colder than the OEM plugs in the N54 and one step colder than the OEM plugs in the N55. So it was kind of just that default recommendation. Everything matched up. It was set up for more power. You know, this is what everybody told you to run. Drop the gap to 0 0.022 and send it. However, if you've been paying attention, you can see that these spark plugs are completely different from the ones that are designed for the B58 engine. Um, you can see the part that goes into the coil pack is different, and the contact plane is different. So it's not actually designed for our coil packs and can potentially damage your coil packs. Um, you also see that the length is different. So the position where it fires in the combustion chamber is lower or it fires deeper into the combustion chamber. Um, even in this case, it's the only one where the NGK has the copper style washer. So just a lot of differences in it. It could also potentially perform different. People claim that it's a step colder than OEM. And you can see on the part number, it still has a heat range of 8 on the NGK scale. So same heat range, just wrong design. There's really no reason to run it in your B58 engine. So now for the commonly asked questions. Um, first thing, people are asking about the maintenance interval to replace your spark plugs. If you're completely stock following the BMW maintenance intervals, then you'll replace your spark plugs every 6 years or 60,000 miles. Um, if you're tuned, it doesn't hurt to change it a little earlier, like every three to four years and 30 to 40,000 miles, just as preventative maintenance. But, you know, the main thing about wearing down your spark plugs is the electrode. So you got to look at the electrode, see if it's worn down, adjust your gap if you need to, but you should be replacing it before the electrode's completely gone. The next thing that people ask is, should you replace your spark plugs when tuning? And the answer is no, you don't have to. If you're already up for replacement, you know, you're at that maintenance interval timing, then yeah, it's a good idea to replace it. If you're at 30 to 40,000 miles anyway, you know, go ahead, it wouldn't hurt. But you don't have to. If you just replaced your spark plugs or if, you know, your car is new, like when I tuned my car, I only had 10,000 miles, so I didn't replace the spark plugs um, and everything's ran fine. So it's not a requirement to change your spark plugs when tuning. 
It's all dependent on your maintenance interval. And the third thing that people ask is, do you need to gap your spark plugs when you're tuned? Again, the only way to tell is to read your spark plugs after driving it for a while. It'll be dependent on your fuel quality and how healthy your engine is and a lot of different characteristics about your car. So you don't have to reduce the gap. Running a big gap is better and more ideal from an efficiency standpoint, but uh, you kind of just need to pay attention to how your car is running in order to change the gap. If you're running higher blends of E85 or fully 85, then reducing the gap will help you with cold starts, especially in the winter. All right, so hopefully that answers all the main questions that people have. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll answer them. Um, as things change, you know, there will be more information available, especially once people get some miles on the new generation B58. We'll get a lot more feedback on how these spark plugs are running. But as of now, these are our options. And the recommendation is run OEM, run what came stock. So if you have any other questions, leave them below. Thanks for watching.